This is video number two of my visit to Denali Weld Laser. In the previous video, we showed several welds on both stainless steel and aluminum. Got a lot of comments, and a lot of them were asking for a cut and etch. Waiting for the cut and etch. Would like to see some testing of the welds. Cut and etch, please. So we will show some cut and etch tests of the welds done toward the end of the video. We're also going to do some side-by-side -side comparisons on travel speed. Let's do it. To be safe, all the laser welding was done inside this enclosure, which has a kill switch on the doors. So anytime anybody opens the door, it kills the laser. All right, let's fire this thing up. So you can see the double key turn switch is here. This thing can't get turned on by accident. So I noticed the, the readout on the wire feeder is 0.5. So what is that? What is that in reference to? So our wire feeders are in inches per second. So that's half an inch per second right now. And you can crank it up. I just did one in a demo last week. I was up to a little over an inch per second on their aluminum application and they were just flying. Hmm. So the speed that you can achieve with it with the right wattage combination is what a lot of the businesses are liking to see and a lot of the welders like to see it as well. Most of the welding you're gonna see in this video was done by their sales engineers. I had to take a stab at it though. Yeah. So there's, there's definitely a feel to it. It's, 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 a, it's a whole lot of feel. You're riding on the wire, mm -hmm. and there's a certain feel to it that when, you, when you're in the pocket or when you're in the sweet spot, it just kind of takes you right along. Yes. You know? This is a lap joint on some 80,000 stainless These are just four inch long pieces, but it only took nine seconds to make that weld. I did a lap joint on the same exact material, just for reference, and although there was kind of a camera in my way, so I was probably not going quite as fast as I would wasn't exactly creeping along, but it still took 50 seconds. And I think that's probably a fairly normal travel speed for a stainless lap joint in 80 thousandths. This is another joint, same material, using a slightly different setting. And this setting is kind of like, you could compare it to pulse TIG, I suppose. I believe they call this the scale mode, where it kind of wobbles the limbs. Hey, the cut and etch tests are coming. They'll be toward the end of the video. We got a couple of more welds to make first. Now we're going to do some aluminum with the 3000 unit. Nothing special here, just a sheared edge. I'm not going to do any prep on this at all. 5000 series, quarter inch thick. There are also a few comments on the YouTube video about Something like, enough of these flat T-joints and lap joints, let's see some odd-shaped parts like cluster joints on tubing and things like that. Obviously, this thing's going to have some limitations on getting access to weird-shaped joints. But for certain applications and in certain industries, this is going to have a place. It's not going to replace TIG welding tomorrow, but there will be certain manufacturing jobs where this time savings is just too much to ignore. You might notice that the unit that we're using on these aluminum joints is the larger unit, the 3000 unit, and it's a dual wire feed. The question that seems to be on everyone's mind is, is, just, is this laying down a caulk bead? Is it just laying there like a caterpillar? Or is it penetrating into the root like it should be? And that's what we're going to find out here in just a couple of minutes. Dialing in the settings on this thing kind of reminds me of a MIG welder with voltage and wire feed speed being the main things. With a laser, it's more like the kilowatts and the wire feed speed. But getting it dialed in, finding that sweet spot to get the weld you want is very similar. This is a scale mode, so it's kind of like a pulse on a TIG. So it's going along a little bit slower, it's filling in a little bit better, and it's putting a set of ripples in there like a stack of dimes. Still pretty fast. Let's look at it from another angle, another perspective. Same joint, same material, slightly different settings. I brought my camera along to try to get some close-up arc shots, but by the time I got started, they were pretty much over. This thing is just so much faster than TIG, it's kind of hard to grab a shot. With aluminum, normally with TIG and MIG, you lose a little strength in the heat-affected zone because the metal gets hot enough to really kind of anneal and, and recrystallize in the heat-affected zone. 
I think in some cases that's going to be a huge benefit to laser versus TIG. Some cases it maybe it won't be. Looking at this weld here, you can see it's kind of sunken in. I would sure think that got penetration into the root, but the only way to know for sure is to test it. All right, now let's compare a TIG welded quarter inch lap joint. Now, granted, this one's gonna be slightly slower because I've got a camera kind of in my way. Not much slower, but just a little bit. So anyway, let's look at the TIG weld and we'll look at the laser weld and then right toward the end of the video, cut and edge side by side. Should be interesting. Let me give you the setup here. I'm set at 200 hertz. I'm up right around 200 amps using a foot pedal. So that's going to vary probably slightly lower at times, slightly more at times. I'm trying to keep a pretty tight arc. I'm using a 1 8 2% lanthanated tungsten that is tapered to a tip, much like I would weld thick steel. I'm using 332nd diameter 5356 filler metal because I'm trying not to take the weld all the way up to the corner. I'm trying to keep it small have it as be much like that laser weld as I can, but this is about as small as I can make it and still feel like I'm kind of punching into the root. Therefore, I'm having to go along just a little bit slower maybe than I, than I normally would, but I'm, I'm going along at a fairly normal travel speed here. I'm not going, I'm not creeping along, I don't think. Now, if this was production parts and I didn't have to worry about that edge and I could just pack rod in there, I could go a little bit faster. But this took 59 seconds for a six inch long lap joint. So that's almost exactly six inches a minute of travel speed. Let's compare that now to one of these wells that we did with the laser. This is not the scale mode. This is one of the other continuous modes, but 11 seconds from start to finish. That is quite a difference. Now let's take a look at some cut and etch tests. We'll start off with the 80 thousandths, two millimeter thick stainless steel. Here is that weld again going in. I'm going to give you a little refresher on what that looked like so you can compare it to the cut and etch test here coming up in a couple of seconds. I sectioned it with a porta band on a stand, gave it a quick polish, put some acid etch on there, and let's take a look at the weld nugget. Very small little weld, fairly comparable to what you would see with a TIG weld. Let's test an aluminum joint now. Again, this is quarter inch thick. 5005 aluminum. They're using 5356 wire. Moving right along, this thing is almost done before you get started. I'm going to cut it on the bandsaw as well. I'll give it a quick polish to remove the sawtooth marks. Use two or three steps down, finer and finer Scotch Brite pads, and now I'm etching with Easy Off Oven Cleaner. That's a really small weld, but man, look at that penetration. That is a nice weld nugget. We'll take a look at another weld here with slightly different settings using the scale mode. And that should be less penetration because it's kind of like pulse TIG. But we're going to take a look at it, see what it looks like. That got in there as well. It almost looks just like the other one. The last test I'm going to do here, I've got a laser weld on one lap joint and a TIG weld on the other. You saw me make that earlier. Same drill here, make the cut with a porta band, polish it down with gradually finer discs of Scotch-Brite. You don't have to have a mirror finish, but you do need to get the rough scratches out. And I'm etching with Easy Off Oven Cleaner. But let's get that arc shot and puddle fresh in our mind here before we look at the cut and etch results. Let's take a look at that puddle here. Do you think that's getting in there like it should be? Or is it possibly just laying in there with not much fusion? How about this? Does it look like it's getting in there, or is it just laying a caulk bead on there? This is why we test things. This is why I like to test things, because all the opinions in the world don't matter compared to testing. The results here are not that surprising to me. That laser weld is a almost picture-perfect weld nugget punched in there like crazy. The TIG weld, it's in there barely with a really shallow throat because I was trying not to fill up the throat because I didn't want to go all the way up to the, the corner and chew off the corner. But look at side by side here. Lighting and contrast is everything here, so I'll help you out a little bit by sketching a little line around the fusion line. Laser on the left, TIG on the right. Well, we just wrapped up several videos, probably at least three videos here at Denali Weld. Super good visit, super impressed. 
Stay tuned for more. Hey, if you have questions about whether a laser would fit your manufacturing needs, I'll put a link in the description to a really quick form you can fill out, and that will forward directly to a sales application engineer at Denali Weld.